it's time for the paper review. As promised, top local and international papers review for an absolutely one hour for you. I'll join us in the studio now is the Rise News Analyst, Dr. Constance Koku and Igo Akariga, who is member of Nigerian Guild of Editors and former Abuja Bureau Chief of the Guardian Newspapers. Good morning, Dr. Koku and morning. Mr. Akariga. Yeah, Thanks no, for being no, here. No. I didn't mother that name. Yeah, yeah. I, I did it. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so let's look at the front pages for you this morning. We'll begin with this day. Uh, it leads with the minimum wage conversation. Consider economic realities. Tripartite committee tells organized labor. TUC NLC selfish in their negotiation, says PDP chief Tain. Uh, and you have a couple of photographs on the front page there, all from the Sala celebration. One has the president, President Bola Tinubu, uh, the NSA, Nuhuru Badu. You have the Minister of State for Defense, I believe that's who it is. My glasses fail me this morning. I do not have them. And we have the richest man in Africa, Aliko Dang Ote, also in the photograph. The other photograph has uh, the governor of Kwara State and chairman Governors Forum. Uh, he's flagged by some eminent people there. Colorful Eid, Eid El Ada celebration in Ilori is what the picture is tagged as. But about the masthead this morning, Tinubu Buhari governors observe aid prayers, implore Nigerians to show charity to the vulnerable. There's also a message, Pope Francis to G7 leaders. Humans must not lose control of AI. Uh, KPMG, Nigeria, must join international mining bodies to attract foreign direct investments to its over 44 solid minerals. And that's the front page of this day for you. Let's look at the front page of the Punch newspaper. Salah celebration, Tinibu Buhari, Sultan Khan, as a Christian institution of Nigeria, offers solutions to hardship with a rider. President urges citizens to share with one another, and Buhari seeks return to farm. That's if he didn't return there after his uh, eight years. 17 billion naira debt, GT Bank dragged 60 bank chiefs to court. Food inflation soars by 61% in one year. This is coming from the MBS. And on minimum wage, FG is pushing 62,000 naira pay despite a position coming from labor. And we have uh, the richest man in Africa, that Dangote. Uh, crude supply, modular refineries back Dangote, Sikhtinibu's intervention. Uh, there you see uh, Muslims praying with the president. Uh, for the Salah celebration. Two fallen trucks worsen gridlock on Lagos Ibado Expressway. Cholera, Lagos opens emergency center. UNICEF urges water provision. Uh, police probe death of US based businessman in Lagos Hotel. And here's the independent of this Monday morning. Chinubu inherited dead economy from Buhari. Presidency affirms, says. Uh, President's reforms restoring investors' confidence. The Daily Independent this Monday morning. Nigeria now bankable. Again, inflation to be tamed soon. The Daily Independent will seem to be having problems pulling that up. Okay, let's look at the Daily Trust if you do have the Daily Trust. Great. So here's the front page of the Daily Trust. Nigeria needs sacrificing citizens to progress, says President Bola Chinubu. Address current hardship, Sultan tells leaders. Buhari, Abdul Salami, Christian Association of Nigeria, others call for unity. And AFDB launches network to spur homegrown solutions to debt challenges. Senegal joins oil producing countries, begins production. And Salah in candle without splendor of Dubai. All right, uh, the euro has just started, Euro 2020. Uh, 2024 rather. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what the Point Sports Extra has for us this morning. The Niger Connection. Stars of Nigerian descent at Euro 2024. There you have Akonji and the Berry Chiesa uh, by the side. Grealish open to City exit. Chelsea handed Olise boost. United told to pay 50 million euros for delete. Uh, some more stories. Juventus needing Sancho Chase from Dortmund and Joshua. Moves ahead, Fury 
in new WBC rankings. NFF should ban Osime for Fididi outburst. This is coming from Peter Sad, the former goalkeeper of Nigeria. Just watched that outburst by Fididi a while ago. Enugu Rangers win eight MPFL title Atletico tag Omorodion on sellable. And Bellingham hands three Lions, that is England, a winning start against Serbia. Le Blue face wonder team test as for the sport sponge extra. And quickly to the Vanguard before we throw to Dr. Constance Koku for the analysis. Foreign portfolio investors in massive return to Nigeria as market share rises to 28 month high, shows up external reserves, analyst <coughs> beg your pardon, attributes development to CBN's hawkish monetary policy. Now, the minimum wage story also makes it to the front page of Vanguard this Monday morning. Uh, Labour tripartite committee chair in verbal war. Uh, Pandev to Tunubu removal of Arase. Provocative. NFF stabbed me in the back, says Finidi. We've not heard the end of the story, have we? A Tunubu inherited dead economy. Presidency tackles New York Times. And there's a Monday interview on the front page of the Vanguard. If we knew what we were getting involved in, we wouldn't have, says Dangote. I wonder what that is. That's a copy the, of Vanguard. You know, he talked about the fact that uh, some, some, some oil cartel tried mm. to stop him. Mm. How that oil cartel is much more stronger than drug cartel. All right, let's look at the leadership paper. It says uh, electoral... Uh, reforms. Lawyers, CSOs, parties disagree over same day elections. I'll ensure credibility, inclusion, IPAC. Uh, same day elections to reduce cost, my practices, CSOs. Logistics challenge, overwhelming for INEC lawyers. Ida Kabri, Shetima Buhari, Abdullah, Abdul Salami, Sultan, governors urge prayers for the nation. Lagos Calaba Coastal Road, Eddie withholds compensation payment. And on the top mass, military remains committed to national security. This is coming from the defense chief. And on minimum wage bill, no plan to see states LG funds. This is coming from the Senate. No answers, protesters, and our custody police is saying that Kaduna moves to tackle housing deficit. Only 45,000 Nigerians on the HIV treatment. And NDLEA seizes 4.7 billion Naira cocaine. Meth, that's methamphetamine, arrest two siblings. That's for the leadership newspaper. Oh, Dr. Constance, go over to you. Yes, good morning. Adesua, Igo, and uh, Ndi. Yeah, so let's morning, start with the last paper that you read, Vanguard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says here, foreign portfolio investors in massive return to Nigeria. Um, of course, the government is pinning it <laughs> how it wants it. It says, analysts attribute also analysts attributing development to CBN's hawkish monetary policy. Um, so in that story, it's telling us that there are fresh inflows of 120.8 billion Naira as at April 2024. Um, and it's trying to compare that to the same time last year, 2023, uh, portfolio investors had left the market due to concerns over foreign exchange market regulations and monetary policy constraints. Okay, so we have a fresh injection of cash uh, right there. However, foreign portfolio investors are not known to stay the long haul. Igor. Well, it's interesting that uh, they, they, they are finding Nigeria an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, investment destination once more. Uh, don't forget, um, at the onset of the administration last year, once Tinubu said um, that where subsidy was gone, um, the entire economy became quite jerky and uh, they started moving out with their funds. Uh, but what we know about foreign, uh, all these portfolio investors, usually they are, they are mobile capital. They, they traverse the world, they, they, they are glued to, they are, they are it, to the internet, looking at um, what the countries that are doing where, the business environment, uh, what level of investable, investable funds they can deploy to those countries. So it's good, one point, one hundred twenty-eight point over $128 billion uh, dollars coming in at a Naira, time. Naira, as, oh, Naira. sorry. Yes. Uh, coming in at a time that, uh, of course, uh, the country is also grappling with uh, its fiscal policies. 
Uh, well, we, we, we wait to see how that translates to the table of the common man. You know, as, as I rightly noted earlier, these portfolio investors are basically, they, they try to put their farm funds in the capital market and look at um, businesses that are doing well. And once those businesses show any sign of, um, of illness, they quickly pull their funds and they run away. So I do not see them as reliable investors, really, because they are not coming to put down uh, structures, they are not investing in industries, in the manufacturing sector, they are simply putting their capitals and looking at how their funds can grow within a short period of time. So well, this is not long-term investment. Yeah, that's the nature of the investment. They are interested in stocks, uh, bonds, bank notes, debentures, commodities, and uh, like you said, it's, it's, it's a, a moving capital that breezes in and breezes out. Um, for a country to have uh, industrialization and long-term development and growth, uh, there's more focus or there should be more focus on um, investments that put down roots, investments that build companies, that build factories, um, and that there for the, for the long term or for the long haul. However, you know, this is also part of investments, uh, but we just have to know, explain, that um, it is not what, you know, will carry the economy uh, in the long term. Um, let's go to uh, Punch newspaper. Uh, Punch here says that food inflation soars by 61% in one year. This is according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Um, National Bureau of Statistics, uh, some years ago, I think it's more than 10 years now, they, they really reject that office and made it very effective. And so you have a lot of information that you need uh, concerning every sector of Nigeria. You can find it at the NBS, so th their, their data is very reliable. Before, it used to be that we weren't able to find data mm -hmm. to do anything in Nigeria, but the NBS has really made us proud. And so according to them, 61% uh, uh, inflation in one year. So when you break down the numbers, uh, from 25.5% 25, 25 of uh, inflation in food from June 2023, now food inflation is at 466 percent as at May 2024. But it also, uh, it also goes on to explain to us um, headline inflation. That is also important, you know, and it is also um, an element, an ingredient in, in the economy that we, we should be looking at. It says that uh, but from 0.26 percent inflation last year, what we have now is 33.69 percent as at April uh, 2024. Uh, that's quite a bit, but I mean, it's not surprising at all looking at these numbers because every day uh, when we go to the market, we see it. I remember yesterday mm -hmm. um, after service, I, I, I was driving down H Medics in Wuse 2 and I stopped to buy a bottle of granite. Mm -hmm. As at last year, we used to buy it for 1,000 naira, 1,200. And I asked the woman, she said 2,500 yeah. naira for a bottle of granite. 2,000 what? 500 oh, I naira. Bought, I bought, uh, I think I bought last week 2,000. That was, it started with 2,000 right. initially, but I had to bring it down. Yeah. <laughs>